So what, what a great event. I'm, I'm very uh, excited and pleased to be here with you. I, I must say, though, I've, I've never had to follow tango dancers. So I hope that I can bring um, uh, you know, half the, the excitement and maybe even less than half of the sensuality uh, in, in the words that I share with you today. Um, so I'm here to talk with you about um, medication management, right? And uh, spend a little bit of time talking about how the simple act of taking a pill is being reinvented and reimagined in the digital age. But first, I want to set the stage. Um, the unsustainable rise in healthcare costs is something that all of us uh, in the room are familiar with. Doug, you definitely alluded to that and is central to a lot of um, the, the initiatives that you're working on here. I got a lot of numbers up here on the slide, right? Um, healthcare, cost, healthcare premiums, insurance premiums, uh, have more than doubled. Um, since uh, 2002, over the last decade. Uh, there are a lot of drivers of this, right? Just high cost is one of them. Some data showing that um, there are some patients that end up getting hospital bills charging $13 for a single pill of Tylenol, for example. A variation is a big issue in practice patterns and in cost. You see some of the data on the slide about some of the variation in joint replacement charges from $5,000 to almost a quarter of a million dollars. Um, one of the really difficult nuts that I don't think we've yet cracked is how to efficiently care for the sickest and the highest cost patients among us. So you can see some data on the slide that, you know, about a quarter of Medicare patients account for over 80% of the total costs, more than $300 billion uh, in 2009. So these are, these are our central, you know, mega trends that are, that are impacting all of us in healthcare. And there's no one solution to this, right? But one of the very exciting fields that we've spent some time already talking about this morning and we'll continue to talk about throughout the day is the emergence of solutions in the telehealth and virtual health arena. This is a very big space, right? There's a lot of things going on. Google Helpouts, Google Glass, um, a, a lot of other innovations. And I want to just set the stage a little bit sharing a framework to help think through what, a lot, what are some of the options here. And I've received special dispensation to leave the red circle. And I'm going to do that to just walk you through this slide here, okay? <laughs> so I hope the, the, the hook doesn't pull me off. But I think we can, it, it, it can be helpful maybe to think of the, the virtual health solutions along a, a continuum, right? Continuum that helps clinicians remove geographic barriers that prevent them from working together, um, helps them work better with patients, and then empowers patients directly on the other end of the spectrum. So with a clinician to clinician, we can think about things like teleradiology, virtual multidisciplinary conferences that help physicians work together more efficiently and share data more efficiently, um, even independent of the patient. The patient's not even in the room. We can kind of walk down the continuum, though, and think about virtual health options that help clinicians, uh, remote clinician specialists, work with, better with clinicians at the patient's bedside. So tele-ICU solutions or um, uh, some of the solutions around telestroke, a big area in virtual health. If we, can if we continue down the spectrum even more, we can think about solutions that directly connect patients to providers. Google, we just saw an example of, of Google Help. Virtual urgent care consults, teledermatology consults, telepsychiatric consults. Moving further down the spectrum, we can think about tools like remote monitoring or virtual medication adherence that, that I'll spend a little bit about time, time talking about that help patients outside of traditional care settings generate data on their own that can help inform the care team, help them participate more effectively in managing their diseases. And then on the other end of the spectrum, we can think about virtual health solutions that help patients um, play a very active role in managing their own disease. Social media outlets, uh, patient web portals, um, personal activity trackers. How many in the room have a Fitbit that they're tracking their steps with today? There is a lot of hands that went up. Congratulations. I'm so, uh, that, that, that's wonderful to see. So uh, those two slides I just wanted to use to kind of set the stage and now drill into one specific application around medication compliance and medication adherence. Um, there's a lot of data out there, right, that if patients stay on their medications, they have better clinical outcomes, and that's not surprising. But increasingly, there's more and more data showing that is, this is also key to reducing unnecessary utilization and reducing the total cost of care. So I have some data on the slide here from a large study, 100,000 patients. They looked at pharmacy claims, and for each patient, was, they were able to link those to inpatient and outpatient service utilization. They looked at four high-volume chronic diseases, 
So congestive heart failure, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol. And they were able to split those patients between the adherent ones that took their meds and the non-adherent ones that were um, less good at taking their medications. And they found that those adherent patients were much less likely to spend time in the hospital and had much lower, significantly lower healthcare costs over the course of a year. You can see the data from the CHF patients, right? On average, they spent six fewer days in the hospital and there was 8,000 fewer dollars spent on their care in that year. Now, improving medication management is admittedly complex, right? It involves behavior modification. The economics of it are certainly significant. But increasingly, we're seeing some, some really cool technology tools to help improve adherence. I want to share one of those with you. Imagine if you had a smart pill bottle that could monitor whether or not you're taking your medications right from your kitchen counter. Right? So this here is from a company called Vitalogy. It's called the Glow Cap. It's an internet-connected pill bottle cap that knows when you should take your medication and can sense if you haven't. Well, the slide here shows a few more details about this. This is something you can get at the drugstore today. It costs about $80. It's a reusable cap. Uh, the patient or a caregiver can go onto a web interface and input the medication schedule. And then if the patient hasn't opened the pill cap at the time they're supposed to, the cap can start glowing to give them a reminder. If that doesn't work, it can start making noise, playing some music, making some chirps. If that doesn't work still, it can trigger a phone call to the patient, a text to the patient, maybe a text to a caregiver or to the patient's daughter who lives across town or maybe even across the country or even trigger the care team. That data is also tracked longitudinally so you can see the rate at which the patient is adhering uh, to their medications. There's an automatic refill button so as the medication gets low, get that medication automatically sent to the patient's home or ready for pickup. I'll also mention that they have uh, packs as well where you can put blister caps or injectables or uh, inhalers, be able to track them in much the same way. So a pretty cool tool, right? One of the questions that comes up is, does this work? Does this make an impact? Uh, Partners Healthcare out in Boston did a study uh, with the company and looked at hypertensive patients and compared those patients, a control group that just got some education about medication management, and then set up another group that got access to the glow caps and another one that got access to the glow caps plus a financial incentive for adhering to their medication. You can see the data on the slide, right? A significant increase in adherence. Patients that were using these glow caps um, adhered to their medications 98% of the time in this study. Pretty impressive, right? This, however, only gets us about 90% uh, of the way, right? You know the patient opened the pill bottle. There's a company, Proteus Digital Health, that's trying to get all the way here, all the way there. You can see the little pills um, on the screen. These are actually ingestible monitors that act much like a potato battery, if you can remember back to junior high. When this pill is ingested and it hits the liquid in the stomach, it sends a signal to a smart Band-Aid that the patient wears, recording the exact time at which that pill was ingested. The smart Band-Aid can also track the patient's heart rate, their temperature, their activity levels um, at the time of, of medication administration. And through Bluetooth, that's connected to a smartphone app or a tablet app. You can produce weekly or monthly reports charting the exact time at which the patient's taking their medication. This can be used in conversations with the patient, with caregivers. The clinical team can use this information. This is an FDA cleared product now. Um, I'll mention that the pills, which take cost just a few cents to produce, um, actually exist right now as an independent pill. So the patient has to take that uh, with their, their, their regular um, medication. But uh, there are many ongoing collaborations right now with pharmaceutical companies to actually embed um, these sensors into the pills. And as you can imagine, pharmaceutical companies have uh, a very high incentive to increase adherence rates as well. Um, this is one of those things, whenever we talk about virtual health, I think there, there's always a little bit of a conversation about how close are we getting to that creepy factor line, right? <laughs> I think if we were to take a poll, some people would be, would be kind of okay with this, others would think we will be approaching this. But the amount of data that can be generated, I think, holds a lot of potential. And these aren't the only solutions in this arena. Uh, just to mention a couple, there's a company called Adhere Tech that's built a pill bottle with a scale in it, a scale that can actually detect the exact number of pills that have been removed from the bottle. It, can, it contains a cell phone chip, which automatically connects to the cell towers and uploads that data into the cloud. And then just last week at the American Telemedicine Association out in Baltimore, a company called AI Cure 
um, showed some technology that they have, facial recognition technology through a webcam, through a smartphone camera, that can be used to verify the patient, verify they're taking the correct medication, and that it, it has been administered in the right way, either through swallowing or sublingual or uh, inhaled, um, et cetera. So this is a, a really exciting, right? There's a lot of exciting technologies in this space. Um, but I want to say that the technology isn't the only piece. Um, let me show you. The, the last two pictures that I showed you, I think, were decidedly high-tech, right? This is not a high-tech picture. It's grainy. Any thoughts from the audience, if you just yell it out, any thoughts on what this is a picture of? An older person's pill regimen. There you go. I, I thought I might heard my, my wife's purse contents. <laughs> you're, you're exactly right, right? This is a patient's medica current medication management system, if you can call it that. This picture comes from a care coordinator, cell phone picture from a care coordinator with the Camden Coalition. Uh, many of you may be familiar with some of the work that they've done out in Camden, New Jersey. Uh, they were profiled a few years ago in a, a Tool Gawande article in the New Yorker called Hotspotters. They've been using some big data assets to understand who are the high utilizers in the Camden, New Jersey market. And that's important, right? Let's figure out who these high cost patients are. But then they've gone the next step and they've sent out care teams to meet these patients in their home, to see what their medication management systems are, to see what their environment is like, and build support networks to help them improve their health. And medication management has been a critical part of the, the outreach and the work that they have done. So, um, I just want to close uh, with some thoughts around building or starting personalized medication management program. The technology is certainly exciting, it's sexy, and it uh, holds a lot of promise. But it takes much more than just a cool technology solution to make this work in the lives of patients. I want to share kind of three thoughts about how to execute on this. Um, certainly identifying the patients likely to benefit uh, is going to be key using EHR data. Uh, physician ordering patterns, et cetera, to identify those patients, and then going out and interacting with them in their environments and in their homes, interviewing patients, uh, talking with them, understanding what their needs are and what hurdles they're currently facing in adhering to their meds and increasing their overall health. Uh, assembling a medication management team is also going to be key. Um, pharmacy certainly plays a role in that, but I think in successful programs that we've seen, it's also involved care coordinators and social workers, strong physician engagement and leadership, and then partnerships with other providers that might not necessarily be thought of as part of the health system. Community pharmacies, community programs and groups like churches, et cetera. And then certainly the, the technology, potential technology partners, which, which has been a focus of, of some of the comments today and some of my remarks. And then I think in, in line with some of the remarks that Sandeep made early, um, pilot, rapidly prototype, see what works, see what spaghetti sticks to the wall, but then get ready to scale. Targeting a subset of patients, pick procedures and policies, and then establish some baseline measures that can help you get some quantitative data on what works and what doesn't. Have the courage to make the changes that you need to make to enhance the effectiveness of it, track the results, and then get ready to scale it and, and roll it out to the broadest number of patients possible. So I hope this has been kind of a helpful glimpse. We, we started big. Healthcare is very expensive. Virtual health um, carries a lot of promise and got pretty narrow into medication management. Um, there's a lot of promise here and I'm very inspired by the themes and the um, goals that have brought you all here together. Uh, appreciate your time and uh, look forward to the chance to interact during the breaks. Well, thank you very much.